when we be when we build our life on the foundation of Christ, we can withstand whatever comes our way. A foundation based on God produces faith and life that allows us to be a living example to others. My sermon title is Youth and Violence. The youthful stages of life can be compared to the building stage. Whenever someone chooses to build a house, he will construct the foundation. In most cases, you need to lay a good foundation, a strong foundation, in order to build a good house. Likewise, the, life, the youthful stages of life are the time you plan to develop a good character, which can be a foundation that will make you a good person when you grow up. Some, someone will want to ask, what is the best foundation to build our Christian life on? Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 3, 10, admonished the believers in Corinth as thus speaking to the believers in Corinth, Apostle Paul said, according to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and others build on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. In verse 11 of the same chapter, Apostle Paul said, For no other foundation can anyone lay than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In effect, Apostle Paul stated first and foremost that it is the grace of God on his life that made him to be a master builder. He did not praise his own ability, but the power of God in his life. Meaning, if we have to lay a good foundation for our life, even on Jesus, we have to yearn, we have to invest to have the grace of God upon our life. He assured us that anyone can build his spiritual life on Christ, the solid rock. Christ is the rock on which we can build our spiritual life. In Matthew chapter 7, when Jesus Christ was finishing his discourse or sermon on the mount, in verse 24, he warned us also and gave us an, an assurance for listening to his word and doing what he says. He used the physical illustration to produce spiritual things. He described two builders in verse 24, Matthew 7, 24, Jesus said, but anyone who hears this saying of mine and does them, I will like him to a wise builder that built his house on the rock. In verse 27 of the same chapter, Matthew 7, Jesus also said, but anyone who hears this saying of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. The stone foundation is strong and can withstand any weather, rain, and storm. The sand foundation is doomed to destruction. In verse 27, Jesus said, When the rain came, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat on the house, the house that was built on a weak foundation, the house fell. Sometimes in life, many people today attempt to lay other foundations for their lives. Some turn to earthly riches. Some hope on human wisdom, like the parable of the fool. Some put their trust in their personal powers. Some use violence as a means of satisfying their vain desires. 
Today, when the youth engage in violence, they are building their life on a weak foundation that will eventually fall. Violence has become part of everyday life for some of our youths in our society. We experience violence in every sphere of life, from the home to the community, from the villages to the towns and cities. Some kinds of violence that we can mention is, is domestic violence, that is husbands taking against their spouses, streets and intercommunal violence, as youth in the neighborhood take on others, criminal violence, as robbery, political violence, that politicians invite youth to intimidate their opponent, or worst of all, nations war against nations, like Russia invasion of Ukraine. In all these scenarios, destruction and killing takes place. This is contrary to the intention and purposes of God. In the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 7, the Lord said, do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I will not justify the wicked. This shows that by using violence and taking someone's life, you are disobeying the word of God. Our God is a God of love and compassion. He is not a God of confusion, but of peace. 1 Corinthians 14.33 When we look at the creation story, we see that God definitely had a purpose in mind when he created man. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over all things, Genesis 1.26. We see that God created man for a purpose. Man is the only creature that God created and was blessed with a divine mandate. God made man and he intended that we can be in a relationship with him so that we can co-partner with him and turn the garden, which is now the world. Someone will tend to ask, what is violence? When we look at the dictionary meaning of violence, violence is described as a behavior involving the use of physical force intended to kill, to hurt or to kill someone or something. In most cases of violence, the victim is either hurt or killed. God's intention was not for us as humans to come and hurt or to kill one another. God wants us to live in peace, in love, and in harmony. Our God is love, and that is why when Adam and Eve failed and fell into sin, God still sent his son to come and redeem us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Christ came to reconcile us to the Father and for us to know that his Father, who is also our Father, is love. When Christ came, he went about preaching. His message was simple. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is my message to us as Christians, that we should return to our Lord, turn around from our wicked ways. We have sinned one way or the other. We have destroyed our foundation or have gone away from the light into the dark. When the youth need to know, we the youth need to know that our God is a compassionate God. He does not take pleasure in destroying us, but he wants us to be saved and accept him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus. How do we minimize youth violence? First, good parenting. It starts with the home. The addict say, charity begins at home. 
And Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child the way it should go, so that when you get old, you will not depart from it. Good parents supposed to train up children in the love and fear of God, so that when they grow up, they will not be hard hearted to participate in violence. Sound moral education. In 2 Timothy 2, 15, Apostle Paul... Oh, you have one more minute. Ad admonish Timothy to be diligent. Sound education can, be, can help the youth to know, to be productive and be diligent. We will turn away from our wicked ways. In conclusion, Second Chronicles 17, 14, God assured us, he said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear and I will heal, I will forgive their sins. We should turn away from our wicked ways and turn to God in prayer. Seek the Lord with all diligence. He has promised to hear us. The ultimate expression of God being the rock to his people will be expressed in the coming of our Lord, of Jesus Christ on earth. This plan was revealed through Isaiah. Isaiah 28, 16, Behold, I lay a stone in Zion. Um, thank you. For thank you Isaac. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. God bless, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. It was good, a good topic. I think a very uh, necessary one. And you shared the scripture on foundation and uh, um, and also the application bit. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you for also uploading the um, yeah outline in the stream. So um, for those of you who have not uploaded, who presented yesterday, you can actually go to the um, assignment section in classwork. And Isaac also can do that. Go to the assignment section and where the sermon topics and titles are listed. And you can actually upload your sermon outline as well as the um, your PowerPoint. If you have one, you can up upload it over there. Right. Thank you. Uh, good job. Thank you, Isaac. Um, yeah, yeah, just love right. So, whom do we have next? Next, we have Subhashish. Um, Subhashish, uh, please go ahead and present. Hey, Subhashish, good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, before I uh, share my topic, uh, let me introduce uh, Gangadhar Tilak Katnam, a 73-year-old, along with his uh, wife. Actually, they are doing something on the road. Uh, maybe you will be guessing. You can guess what actually they are doing. Uh, they have actually done a good job to help save lives. Uh, he's a retired man and spent uh, 40 lakhs of rupees and uh, repaired 2,000 path holes. Uh, if you come to India, you will find the path holes every cities, and uh, they are they are actually doing in Hyderabad, and uh, they are actually saving lives. Uh, this morning, my topic is save to save. We all are saved. That's what actually we are here to save others. Many of the people in the world, they are thinking, am I in danger that uh, I need to be saved? And maybe they're thinking, okay, that, okay, I am, uh, I'm not in, a, I'm not burning or I'm not drowning or there is no calamity. Okay, I'm okay. Maybe many uh, people, those who are in uh, authorities, they are thinking, okay, I have bodyguards with me. Okay, maybe politicians, they are they will also think the same that uh, am I in danger? Okay, most of the people they are thinking it's okay. Um, I'm very comfortable. But Bible says we all are sinners. Romans 3:23, Bible says that all have sinned. 
those who are in Africa or those who are in India, wherever actually we are born, maybe our color or maybe our language, different language, but we all are sinners. And the consequences of the sin is death. Bible says in Romans 26, 23, that for the wages of sin is death. So if we are sinners, that means we are going to face the death. We, we all are going to die. It's not only talking about physical death, that person actually he's worried about uh, physical death. That's what actually he is repairing the path holes. The same way God is the person actually he wants to save us. That's why the Bible says in uh, Luke 19, 10, for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. And this is a good news for every people on this earth. That though we are sinners, though we means we are going to face the death, but God says that He came down to this earth to seek and to save us. John 10, 10 says, The thief doesn't come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life, and that, that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give us life. And this is the good news for every one of us. That if we are sinners, if we have committed uh, any, any type of sins, the good news is that Jesus came to save us. He died for our sins. He resurrected. And he wants to help us to enjoy that eternal life, what actually he has for all of us. Most of the actually believers like all of us that uh, we are rejoicing that yes my sins have forgiven now i am not a sinner jesus is my lord i know ephesians 2 8 9 that i have been saved by grace as uh, ephesians 2 8 9 says for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of god not works so that no one can boast. Most of the time, actually, we rejoice that, Lord, you have died for my sins. My sins have forgiven, and I'm happy. But God has called every believer for a purpose. And this is the greatest call for every believer on this earth. We have been called to save. Bible says, in Jude 1 23 first part that save others snatching them out of the fire and this is an urgent call this is urgency in this today's world if someone is dying we cannot wait for hours or months but we will either actually we will help him to rescue or to save his life or we will leave just uh, leave him and he will die Bible says that John 14, 6, that I am the way and the truth and the life. If people are not knowing Christ, that means they are perishing without Jesus Christ. Perishing without knowing him. They are lost without Christ. If nobody in this world, they don't know about a path or a way, then where actually they will travel? They cannot reach the destiny. In order to reach God, in order to reach the eternal life, we have to come to Jesus. Somebody has to show him. Because if uh, we are here, I can actually say uh, boldly that somebody has come to save us. Somebody has shared the good news to us. Maybe our pastors, maybe our brothers, maybe our parents, any, any of the uh, one actually came. And this is the same God actually has commissioned all of us. Those who are saved, those who are born again, and those who are said, Lord, you have saved me. I am a child of God. Bible says, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age this is not a call 
or commission only for the pastors or for apostles this is a call this is a commission for every believer but the sad thing is that till 2022 many people are still unrest many people groups still on this world they are unrest and many even traditional churches they are also facing the challenges for the newcomers but the good news is that if you think about early church they have the challenge to reach the whole world but in 2022 if we calculate okay more than two crores uh 200 crores are christians but if we just maybe calculate maybe 50 percent of them are born again i'm just giving a statistics or calculations it's not accurate but i'm just giving so that actually will increase if eight hundred crores people are there if hundred crores people are christians the good news is that we have to reach only eight person if all over the world if a believer will reach eight person that means we will reach everyone but the sad thing is that most of the believers they are not taking the good news to others they are satisfied with their personal spiritual life this morning once again i will encourage you to think about yourself most of the time we think lord i am not worthy to share your good news i'm a sinner but bible says in john 4 28 the woman then left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the man come see a man who told me all things that i i ever did could this be the christ then they went out of the city and came to him i'm talking about samaritan woman she was also busy with her personal life most of the time actually we are only thinking about our career our job or our family but think about this samaritan lady she has also a bad past but when she came to jesus when she encountered with christ she she could not able to resist herself she introduced her god to the villagers maybe she has never thought okay i will go back to uh, them and they will know me they will maybe welcome me maybe they will reject me they, she has not thought anything but she just took the uh, took a fifth step and went and we know that what happened all villages came to jesus this morning i just want to challenge all of you as we all are the bible college students most of the bible college students they are satisfied with church but this morning i just want to encourage all of you that can you or will you say today like isaiah as he heard a voice from the lord saying whom shall i send and whom will you go for us and i said here am i send me isaiah that day he said lord i am here you send me as this morning i said that someone has received this call that's what actually he came and preached the good news to us that's what actually we are in christ right now there are many people they are dying without christ they don't know who will help them they don't know actually what happens after death but the good news is that we are saved and this is the call for each one of us that as god has saved us we should also take initiative uh, one more minute to go and preach the good news thank you all of us keep on praying for yourself don't resist yourself if god is calling you to share the good news then today is the day god bless you thank you thank you Subhashish. that is very inspiring uh inspiring to hear about that um, elderly couple also you know, who are doing their bit and uh, really tied in well you know where there was a need they stepped in so we know what the need is world's need is and we as believers we are, uh, we are called to do that thank you so much
Okay, so um, next is um, Elisha. Is Elisha there? Okay, Elisha is not here. Georgia is also not here. Okay, um, would anyone else like to present? Uh, Lyndon, would you like to, since you are here, would you be able to present? Pastor, uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm traveling. Uh, You're traveling. Okay, uh, okay. I'm not in a position to press it. Sorry. Okay, okay. I, I saw your I message. I was at home during the first two hours. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, the thing is, uh, we have. Ready with my contact. It's so fast. I'm sorry? I'm, I'm ready with my content. It's just that, you know, this time, the, the mm. between 11 to 12, is not a great time for me, particularly when I'm when I need to go to office. Like, I can't. Work from. I can't choose to work from home today for this week. So I'm in a critical position where I need to go to office mm -hmm. uh, at least for this week. Yeah, if at all, I, see. I can manage even for the third hour. But otherwise, if, if it's for the first two hours, I'm available even tomorrow. Um, the thing is, we don't have a class schedule for tomorrow, uh, Lyndon. There are other things happening. Uh, so what we can do is uh, you can present on uh, Tuesday, the twenty second. But it'll be still the third hour, you know. Um, the I, I, will, I, I will decide to work from home next week. I will okay. decide to work from home next week. It's just that I cannot opt for work from home. Sure, yeah. sure. I understand. No problem at all. No problem. So we'll do it uh, on Tuesday, at twenty second, and um, yeah, um, that's fine, Lyndon. Appreciate it. Appreciate you I've taking this time. Uh, I'm sorry. I've uploaded the PPT on the SharePoint, but just to, I'm, yeah, I've yeah, uploaded yeah. I my saw that. PPT on the share drive, but I will upload right. it again to the assignment section, like you said earlier. So sorry, I kind of got uh, disconnected. Um, okay, so um, so I think the others, any, anyone else who was uh, here and who would like to present? Um, so the thing is this, we have time, our last day of presenting would be 22nd, right? Because 24th, um, we, do, we will not be able to do that. Um, uh, simply because uh, I mean we we can we can all I guess but um, it's going to be a little tight uh, we can't accommodate everyone so yeah so we will look at twenty second we might have to go into some extra time if more people are there who are willing to present um, um, and we can look at Thursday also the following Thursday um 24 that is the last day which means i'll have to evaluate everything on that day itself um so we can do that as well but um yeah so if those of you who are not presenting um who are unable to present maybe you can upload the video on the drive but you will obviously lose points because um you have not presented in person um i'm talking about the online class not the e-learning so you will lose, uh, you will be evaluated uh, based on your outline, and I can still go over the presentation. Uh, but it won't be the full marks, um, um, which will be, uh, you know, it won't be the full evaluation, um, which is for the rest of the students. Okay, so just wanted to mention that. Okay, there's one more quiz, so which will be uploaded um, uh, tomorrow or day after, and uh, which will, will have the due date as 24th. Um, closing hours the 24th and that'll be all uh, just wanted to mention there are some of you who have actually um, you know kind of tried to um, submit the first quiz I noticed multiple responses right um, I'm talking about the uh, online class again um, multiple times you've tried to you know so I'm going to take I'm going to go with only the first um, 
your response okay so the first time you sent in and that's what we will go with not the second time or the third time so just want to mention that okay okay so we will stop here and we will meet again on tuesday and um, yeah tuesday is uh, those who are presenting on tuesday i think it's uh, um, okay linden is presenting who else uh, jeffina is presenting um, and yeah, I'll put out the list again as a reminder for us, for those who are presenting on uh, Tuesday. Um, please do come prepared and let's do this. Okay, fine. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye.